Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Holiday ruined, perhaps. Listen, I try to look at things as optimistically as I can, especially when I'm in Tenerife. I don't want to be too downbeat about things, but very hard not to be after what we've just seen. I am going to fly through this match reaction because the best thing I can do is get myself into the pool and forget about things. Also, I forgot to put the microphone on charge after I've done the last match reaction, which means this might conk out at any given moment. So we're going to run through it today. If you haven't already, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. I know that the Rangers fans, the Kelly fans, will be delighted to see that my holiday has been ruined by a 2-1 defeat at Rugby Park this afternoon. Um, but we got what we deserved. Kelly deserved to win the game. Celtic didn't. And the problems from today's game, they, they far expand out of what we've seen in that 90 minutes. There is a lot of problems at Celtic at the moment. They have been highlighted in uh, great depth after this afternoon's performance. This is nuts to me that this is our first defeat of the season in the league. Nuts to me because this feels like the 10th time I've sat down here to talk after a defeat. It's been a long time coming. Um, I thought that we played well enough on Wednesday to suggest that, you know, maybe throughout the month of December we would we'd win all the games that we had to. But this has been coming. Uh, we've seen a 45 minutes against St. Johnson last week that was arguably our worst of the season and the worst that we've seen in a long time at Celtic. That has been trumped by the second 45 minutes that we've seen today at Rugby Park. An absolute pathetic excuse of a performance. Um, I think both from the managerial point of view and from the players' point of view, uh, you've got to dish out the blame on both sides. Nobody's exempt from blame here, um, especially the manager, who I think has set us out in a way there in the second half that, that didn't get us anything from the game. There was nothing in that second half to me that showed that Celtic had a clear idea of what they wanted to do. There was no display of uh, consistency in the performance. We looked lost. We couldn't match what Kilmarnock were trying to bring to the game. And it's down to the manager to adjust to that during the game. And listen, I'm not just blaming him. You know me, I'm Roger's biggest fan. I love Brendan Rodgers and I, I want things to, I desperately want things to work out the best for Brendan Rodgers and Celtic. Um, but right now, there is no sign of that happening with performances like this. The players looked completely and utterly lost in the second half. And, and the weird part is, in the first half, I think we played a lot of good football. We just didn't take our chances. We should have had more than one goal. We could have put the game to bed. We, we didn't do that. Um, but the second half, we looked so detached from the Celtic that we've seen and, and come to know and love over the last couple of years. We have slowly, I say slowly, we've rapidly digressed. It has just been, you know, constantly getting worse. There has been no progression and there's a number of factors that contribute to that. I don't think that's down to either the players, the manager, that obviously comes into recruitment. We've not had a good January. Tra we've not had a, a good transfer window since January of 2022. We have not improved this squad. We have not improved this Celtic side. I think if you look at the signing since um, 2022, January 2022, the window where we brought in um, Matt O'Reilly, Dyson Maeda, Rio Hitati, you know, there's there's one or two players who have been good enough the standard that we need at Celtic Football Club: Alistair Johnston, Luis Palma, and then they have been surrounded by utter shite to put it bluntly, and that was very much on display this afternoon with the, the state of the team that started the game and the state of the team that ended the game. That's where Brendan Rodgers has to take some of the criticism. You're starting the game today with Nat Phillips at centre-half. It, My mind is boggled. I, I, I don't know where to begin understanding how Nat Phillips is getting into this Celtic team ahead of Mike Navrovsky and ahead of Gustav Lagerbelka. I don't understand. Nat Phillips is just as bad, if not worse, than Shane Duffy. And he's starting games. How? What is going on at Lennox Town? What is going on with the standard of the signings we are making if Lagerbielka and Navrovsky can't even get on the bench and Nat Phillips is starting games? Lagerbielka kept five clean sheets in five games. He wasn't great. I'm not going to sit here and say he was fantastic, but he still he kept five clean sheets when he was partnered alongside Liam Scales. Um, Mike Navrovsky, who only managed to, to get a couple of appearances before picking up an injury didn't look all that bad but something must be seriously wrong with the standard of them if they cannot get in this team ahead of Nat Phillips a guy who, may I remind you, is leaving the club in January but that's Brendan Rodgers making that decision he's picking the team I think that that's a, an error from the very get-go tonight 
or today, I should say. I think that was an error from the very start. As soon as the team was announced, I don't understand how Phillips is getting into this team because if we're working things on merit, Nat Phillips doesn't have any at the moment, doesn't have any merit at all. Whereas I think Lagabelka and Navrovsky at least have a little bit of that. But something must be going on at Lennox Town that's keeping him out of the team. I think it was a very poor decision to start Phillips and, you know, we've seen why uh, as the game went on. I'm trying to do this in one take because I, I really want to be able to make sure the microphone has enough juice in it. Um, so sorry if it feels a little bit kind of discombobulated, but as I've told you, I'm on holiday. You can forgive me for now. We'll be back to the normal standard from Thursday onwards. Um, if, I, if I were to do it, I would normally do it and go back to the start of the game. First half, as I said, I don't think we were that bad. We, we did create chances. We weren't uh, ruthless enough with our chances. O had a good couple of opportunities, which he didn't take. Um, a couple of other players had chances we didn't take. We did finally find the net. Matt O'Reilly was there to uh, take second helpings on Callum McGregor's parried shot. Um, and listen, I was confident at half time. I was like, OK, I think there's enough there to suggest that we will go on to win this game. But the one thing that did worry me moving into that second half is towards the end of the half, we did allow Kilmarnock to get physical, to get a little bit more aggressive in the game. And we did start to look as though we were struggling with that. Naturally, though, you assume that that's something the manager will address at halftime and something that we will change or tinker the team with so that we can handle that. That wasn't the case. And that's where we got blown out of the water in the second half. So there's not much to talk about in the first half. I think the conversation spawns far more with what we've seen in that, that second 45. It's the, worst sec it's the worst 45 minutes of football I've seen all season. Uh, and, and that's been uh, a constant phrase used by Celtic fans this season. We've had really bad 45s, but this for me was the absolute worst. Kilmarnock looked like the team who should be top of the league and Celtic looked like the side who could be arguably in a relegation battle. There was no confidence in what we were doing, either offensively or defensively. Uh, it was scrappy. We were giving away set pieces for fun. Kilmarnock were roughing us about, and, and we could do nothing about it. And there wasn't any players in that park who could stand up to it. Um, and that's a serious problem with what we have here at the minute, I'm afraid. I, I'm, I'm just... You have to be bluntly honest in saying that this squad is nowhere near the level required. It's actually quite a terrible squad to look at when you put the names out, all senior players from goalkeeper to striker, list all 30 of them or whatever, there is arguably 15 or 16 of them who are nowhere near the quality required to play for Celtic Football Club. We got into that second half, we're automatically on the back foot, we cannot raise our game to do better, and um, then when you're down, sorry, when it's one all and you're then chasing the game or you're 2-1 down and you're chasing the game, we're ending that 45 with a front three or four, depending on how you want to look at it. We'll talk about that. But you're talking about wingers, Yang and Forrest. That's as bad as Johnson and Palmer being the starting two wingers. But you're ending the game where you're suddenly needing to score two goals with Yang and Forrest on the park. That's an unacceptable level to be at, quite frankly. Uh, we are, we've not left ourselves placed well at all. That's outside the manager's control at the minute. That's outside the squad's control at the minute. That's where the other element of blaming the board comes into. The board have left us... They've sold Rodgers a dream again. Um, and then once again, Rodgers not exempt from blame, but you look at the tools he's got to work with at the minute, and the squad is, is terrible. It's, it's really, really bad. It's probably the worst the Celtic squad has been in a long time. And, and you know, I've seen people saying that this is the same Celtic squad that won a treble a few months ago. Um, you know, suddenly you can't just become rotten overnight. And I understand that, I get it. But it doesn't mean that we're, we've not upgraded on that squad. And look at the injuries we're dealing with at the minute. You know, we're talking about a, a side that won a treble. Some of the most important players from that treble winning side aren't here now. Hitati, injured. Maida, injured. Abada, injured. Jota, gone. Starfield, gone. Cameron, Cameron Carter-Vickers, not here today, injured. That's, you're talking about six of the most important players in a treble winning side. That's, that's over half of the start of the living. Not in that side today. So, yeah, you can argue it's the same squad that won a treble uh, six months ago or whatever. It's not, because six of them are no in, this, in the team today. 
Um, the depth is just shockingly bad, and you can't you can't influence a change in the game of those players there. There's not enough. There's not none of these players are ready to step up to the to the plate. Um, there's none that I look on that bench today and go, they'll change the game. Apart from the one guy, Kyogo, who has been very poorly managed by Brendan, I must say. Once again, shocker. Ryan criticising his lord and saviour, Brendan Rodgers. You bring Kyogo into the game. You're not putting him in the effective position that he needs to be in. He's sitting behind O. Um, and that's been the story of Kyogo's season. Yeah, he's still scored some big goals. He's still scored some crackers. Ultimately, he's not been effective. He's not been as effective as the Kyogo that we've known over the past couple of years. He's not getting played uh, in, in the right role or, or position for me. He hasn't been all season. And you can see that affecting him because he's not scoring goals. Not as many as he was scoring last season or the season prior. Um, he looks a shadow of himself. And he's brought on today to be the hope of, of, of salvaging something from the game. And he can't. He can't do anything because he's not getting played in that correct role, as I've said. Um, that's poor management from Rodgers there. I think that, yeah, sometimes you've got to sacrifice individuals or... Or, or the positives, of, at least, or the positive traits of individuals to, to supplement your own system. But the mark of the best professionals, and, and Rogers has done this, and I don't know why he's not doing it now, the mark of the best professionals is to adapt. And I don't think that Brendan Rogers has done enough to adapt Kyogo into the system that he wants to implement at the side. Now, it's a streak that goes both ways. There's no denying that. Kyogo has to do better as well. I, I think he's not been as, as good... But ultimately, I think that is down to how he's been being played rather than his own individual performances. He just is like a kind of ghost in the game nowadays when he was the heart and soul of the team over the last couple of years. Um, so there's poor management in, in certain areas of the side at the minute. Ultimately, I, I just don't think the squad is good enough. But the one thing that we haven't talked about from today's game and the overwhelming story is we've opened the door for a title challenge now and a title race with Rangers. We had an eight-point advantage over Rangers. It's now realistically down to two. They're playing St. Johnson at home. You can't just hand out wins and say that Rangers are guaranteed it because they're not even that great at the minute. Um, and that's where we're lucky as well. We're lucky they're not that great at the minute. But realistically, you're looking now at a title challenge uh, and, and, and a position where we have squandered six points of an eight-point lead. It's unacceptable. And I've always been an advocate for saying that it can't always be a cakewalk. You, you're not guaranteed to win every game. You've got to take the nitty gritty. You've got to accept that the league titles are difficult to win. And listen, I'm up for the challenge. But the manner of how we've handled this and the manner of how we've let this get away from us is not good enough. And there should be severe questioning of what's going on at the club from top to bottom. We have been poorly handled from the highest level the club continuously willing to accept mediocrity and ultimately being above Rangers in the league table, being the bare minimum uh, as the mark for success at Celtic Football Club. That ain't going to do it uh, for us as supporters and for us as a club. Because now, you know, a treble's gone, as we all know. That was gone months ago. Um, a league title is now in the balance. I'm not going to overreact and panic I genuinely do think that Celtic can still win this league I really do I, I think that once again a big part of that comes down to how, how bad Rangers are as well at the minute but we have not handled it in the way that we should have when you're 8 points clear you should be building on that you should be progressing from that and we haven't we have £70 million in the bank that the board are refusing to spend January is huge for us and sadly, I just don't think it's going to do it. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more performances like this from now to the end of the season, if I was to be brutally honest with you. Um, but this, you know, if I was to run through the 11 that was on the park today, very few of them get pass marks. Not from just today's performance, from their season so far. Players who were doing well at other points in their Celtic careers, they aren't doing well now and they're being exposed. I think you know some of the players I'm talking about. We have a massive job to do in January and we need to turn this boat around. We need to bring positivity back and Wednesday was, was perfect. You know, we won 4-1. We played really, really well uh, for the large majority of the game. How do we build on it? By losing again at Rugby Park for the second time this season. It's not good enough. 
but whole hum. Right, I'm getting to the pool because I'm depressing myself. I can see the sun and I, I know I should be out in it. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. I know that the comment section is going to be a right good laugh, both between Celtic fans and Rangers fans. So just play nice. We'll pick things back up on Wednesday. In case you don't know, uh, I'll, I'll actually be missing a majority of the game on Wednesday because I'm I'm flying during the first half. But I land for the I think I land for like the end of for half time. Put it that way. Um, maybe that's doing me a favour. I must say. <laughs> but if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.